Today we're going to be getting into the subject of how to barbell your portfolio, but as always, we're going to begin with a look at what the scriptures have to say about how to treat money, finance, and possessions. And the principle we're going to begin with today is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. And there we read, Blessed is the one who finds wisdom. Or another way you could translate that is, Happy is the one who finds wisdom. You know, everybody I know is in pursuit of happiness, right? We all want to live a happy, healthy life. Uh, We've even even been told by the signers of the Declaration of Independence, which we'll celebrate on July 4th, that we have been given a right by God to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, isn't it important to find out from that God how we achieve that happiness? And so the scriptures say, and specifically the writer of this passage, is the ancient King Solomon, known as being the wisest man in all the world, given that gift by God. And so he says, blessed is the one who finds it. It almost sounds like it's a, you know, maybe uh, you came across it. It was an accident. But it's really, if you, as you read the book of Proverbs, about the pursuit of wisdom. And it goes on to say, the one who gets understanding, knowledge, and comprehension. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. If you're looking for profit, if you're looking for that which profits, if that which yields a good return, then look into wisdom and understanding, because the profit on that is far better than gold. It's far better than trading in commodities, far better than trading stocks, bonds, mutual funds. It says she is more precious than jewels. I love the fact that our uh, translation gives wisdom a female characteristic, maybe often associated with wisdom. Our wives are women of wisdom we trust. So she is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. So that's the price that God puts on wisdom and the value that God puts on wisdom in contrast to the ways most of us are seeking happiness through fame and fortune. Solomon is really explaining here, in addition to a number of other principles, that money does not buy happiness. We know that. We know that internally. We've been taught that growing up. But somehow we, we seek after that. It dominates our thinking. If you're in a career, so often it becomes the focus of your job. How do I get to the next highest level of income and the next and the next? Rather, where do we find happiness? Well, in wisdom. And wisdom com- comes in many forms, right? We'll say somebody's wise beyond their years because they, ge- they demonstrate kind of the wisdom of the elderly. <clears throat> Experience, right? We might call that or uh, wisdom about how to accomplish a skill. Maybe you're really good at something, and, and, they, and somebody might say about you, well, he's really wise when it comes to that trade. Or we might just be talking about life. But James calls the wisdom that Solomon is referring to the wisdom that is from above, not from beneath, the wisdom that is from above. So it's not wisdom generated by human experience. It's not wisdom generated by knowledge. It is wisdom that is a gift truly from God, and only that wisdom is the fountain of happiness. It is only that kind that can bring you the true happiness. In Proverbs, not only in this passage, but in many others that we'll discover, we learn that there is a kind of wealth and riches that come with wit, uh, with wisdom. For example, elsewhere, we learn the blessing of the Lord makes us rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Well, that's kind of neat because we see, as we often do in the media, celebrities, the wealthy, have sorrow surrounding their, their riches, broken homes, broken dreams, tragedy, court cases, and on and on it goes. But rather, this kind of wisdom that comes through God's blessing brings a kind of riches that doesn't add sorrow. It doesn't bring unhappiness. It brings happiness. Now, money may be a byproduct of wisdom. There's nothing wrong with gaining riches and honor, as Solomon says in our passage today in Proverbs 3, 13 to 16. Nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, honor is something to be desired. The Bible says a good name is more desirable than great riches, right? So your testimony, how people regard your name. But true riches are actually found in the things that last forever, not the things that are temporal. We know that the things of this earth, like money, gold, jewelry, 
possessions like cars and houses, all of that is eventually going to be consumed and be done away with. And so someone has said it so well in this pithy little poem, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. So it's the eternal. And where I really find that that focus comes into clarity in my life is in the area of relationships. Relationships. Can money be useful in relationships? Well, certainly. We saw in the early church that money was used to meet needs and to be a blessing. You had a very wealthy man named Barnabas, who later became the companion of Paul in his missionary travels, and he sold everything, and he brought it to the apostles, and they used his possessions to um, meet the needs of those who were poor or who were going through a crisis. So tremendous blessings that money can bring, but it's a byproduct of wisdom. It should not be our pursuit. It is not an an essential component of wisdom. So as we're contemplating what God's Word has to say about money and finance, let's put our focus on wisdom, on wisdom. You say, well, how do I get that? Well, it starts with God's Word, spending time. Joshua 1.8 tells us that if we don't allow that book of the law, the Scripture, to depart out of our mouth, but we meditate in it day and night, then we're going to know what prosperity and success is all about. So it begins with listening for God's Word And then asking. James tells us again, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. He's going to give it to you. It's not going to be something separate from his word. It'll come through his word, but God will guide you and lead you in the pursuit of that wisdom. Well, as we're helping people day by day here at Lord & Richards to discover that true wisdom and to put it into place, we're helping people build plans for a financial future that is secure and that can hopefully be a blessing to you, your family, and ultimately, the kingdom of God. It really just starts with picking up the phone, chatting, and learning more about you. We love to visit with folks every single day, just like you. We're helping people all over the Denver metro area and now across the nation to obtain financial independence from a biblical point of view.